This is an ADC warning. The crimes you're about to see are true. Only the names were changed to protect the ignorant. You'll meet a bandit with a beer box for a brain. Surveillance camera footage of the shortest workday in history. And the dumb criminal who cashed and burned. All these and more tonight on America's Dumbest Criminal. Hi, and welcome to the show. I'm Daniel Butler. You know, contrary to the popular image of graceful cat burglars, most of our crooks make a lot of noise, breaking glass, knocking over trash cans, yelling as they fall down elevator shafts. We've heard them all. But these chimes of crime are always drowned out by the clanging of the jail cell door. After all, they are America's dumbest criminals. First, retired officer David Hunter tells the story of the beer box bandit. Probably the most inept criminal that I ever encountered in my career, we came to call the Beer Box Bandit. He and his girlfriend went out to rob a convenience store. When they got there, he didn't have a mask, so we ripped the insides out of a beer carton, pulled it over his head so he had to turn sideways to look out the crack. He went into the store and actually robbed the clerk. And five minutes after the robbery, she drove by about 15 police cars. And he threw the money bag out the window. They still had the beer box when they caught him. A week later, he's out on bond. He decides to do another daring robbery at the same location because nobody will expect it. This time, with the beer box in place over his head, he stumbles towards the door, but the clerk from the previous robbery recognizes him. She locks him out of the building. and tells his friends that we'll go rob another convenience store while they're here. The only thing was, this was a new store. The clerk was locked in a bulletproof cage. And when he went in and took the pistol out, she locked him inside the store with an electronic door lock. And that's where he was when the officers arrived to take him into custody. And he was a founding member of the Witless Protection Program. ABC quiz number 444. After handing the teller a hold-up note, a reluctant robber changed his mind and fled in a hurry. He left something with the teller that led police directly to him. Did he forget? A, the hold-up note with his fingerprints. B, the keys to his getaway car. Or C, to think. The correct answer is all of the above. Of course, having the world's largest getaway car didn't help either. Next, Patrick Adamson tells ABC about a dumb criminal who picked the right house. Working residential burglary, and I had a bur uh, bunch of burglaries involving uh, silver dollars. So I contacted all the convenience stores in the area and told them if anybody came in with a bunch of silver dollars to, to let me know. I knew what house, and I also knew who it was, but I didn't have enough evidence to, to get him. Well, it wasn't 30 minutes later the store calls me and says, this guy came in with a bunch of silver dollars, you know. So I rounded him up, and... Um, got the money and I took him by the house I thought that he had broke into. Is that the house you robbed? No. No. Uh-uh. Next block. Go down here and turn left. Oh, God. He said, no, 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 that's not the house I broke into. And he took me to the house that he actually broke into. Now, actual surveillance cam footage of a dumb criminal's answer to the one-minute manager. It's one-minute labor. Here you see a government employee showing up for work and taking the cover off the time clock. Now he's adjusting the time and about to punch in. Well, now it's off to work for a busy morning of, oh, about eight seconds of real labor before it's back and time to manipulate the time clock again. And you know what? Hey, I'm feeling kind of hungry. Yeah, I think I'll punch out for lunch now. Yeah, it's been about 20 seconds. Time for lunch, and after a healthy lunch, it's time to punch out for the day and put the cover back on the old time clock. You know, in the private sector, this guy might have been fired, 
But since he works for the government, he's just finishing his third term as a U.S. Senator. Next up, a dumb criminal grins and bears it all. When a small mom-and-pop store was robbed by a lone gunman, the prime suspect was quickly spotted by everyone in town. The fleeing felon's first explanation of his new jogging was very interesting. Thanks. What are you doing today? I'm just out for a jog, you know. Uh, just like commune with nature, you know. I understand. You don't know what you do, you? No, ma'am, I don't. Oh, really? No, I'm just out for a jog. Go ahead. What's that in the bag, uh, Just some lunch, you know. Some lunch? Yeah, health food. The officer received a radio call about the robbery down the street. What have you been doing this afternoon? Jogging. Didn't by chance rob a market, did you? All right, you got me. What are you doing running around naked? Well, I, I figured nobody would recognize me, you know. Wouldn't be the guy with a black shirt and the green pants, you know. I just, I mean, I'm naked. The naked truth of the dumb criminal plan. Case closed. Later tonight, an outdoorsman turned dumb criminal goes fishing. You know, when we steered our mobile crime unit towards Birmingham, Alabama, we received a warm southern welcome and a whole gaggle of dumb criminal stories. Next up, a bean for brains in Birmingham finds out he's been bed framed. Called a guy one time, he went to his parents' house. The parents ate one now. We'd look for this guy and we'd look for him. Looked under the beds, over the beds, closets everywhere. So we'd look up under the bed, we wouldn't see him, but we'd look across the bed, we wouldn't see him. <laughs> and my partner just happened to walk to the side of the bed, and there he was, up against the wall, and had the mattress in the bed, pushed him up against the wall. Let me see your hands. Get up. Help me out. <laughs> then he was stuck on, over there, and had my partner, he said, help me out. My partner said, I didn't help you get over there. You had to get out there by yourself. <laughs> He was definitely downright dumb. In Ohio, it used to be against the law for a woman to wear patent leather shoes, but she could wear latex rubber jumpers and spandex moomoos. Paul Heaton recalls a car thief with a Novocaine brain in forwarding address. About two months ago, I got a call for service to uh, go to a parking lot. A caller called in and said there were several teenagers around a car in the lot that they thought was probably stolen. So as soon as the police cars started to arrive, these three teenagers took off running. I happened to catch one of them after a short foot chase. And as soon as I had handcuffed him, the first words out of his mouth were, Why, man? What are you doing, man? I didn't steal a car. Yeah, what are you doing? I said, I haven't said anything about a stolen car. This kind of threw him off a little bit. So I led him back to uh, the parking lot where my car was and where the stolen car was still parked in the lot. And uh, he's back there in the back thinking that he's under arrest for running from the cops. I haven't mentioned anything about a stolen car. Man, am I going to jail? Uh, yes, you are. Can I get my hat and my mail first? Where is it? It's in that car over there. Well, of course, that was the stolen car. <laughs> so I said, OK. So went over there and got about five pieces of mail with his name and address on it. And his toboggan came back and said, these are yours. Yep. I said, all righty. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. What about my hat? You sure it's not stolen, too? Within a week's time, I believe they had linked him to between 10 and 20 other larceny of autos. We have your mail, Mr. P. Brain. Now, actual surveillance cam footage we call Truck Trap. This is a dumb criminal in action. Why? Number one, he 
he's committing his crime in broad daylight. Number two, he broke the glass with his bare hands. Number three, he had trouble unlocking the door. Number four, he rummages around the cab rather than driving off, which allows the police time to arrive, which leads us to number five, he gets busted. And now, inside the courtroom for trial and error. From actual courtroom transcripts, a butterbrain gets toasted in jamming. Officer Gillette, at about what time did you arrive at the bank and see the alleged robber? 4.30 in the afternoon. I see. And at what time did you place the robber into custody one block away? Five o'clock, twilight. Sir, why would it take anyone 30 minutes to travel one block? <laughs> he got stuck in rush hour traffic. Later tonight, two world-class Dumbos take their buns and run on America's Dumbest Criminal. Next up, Lori Morgan guest stars in the story we labeled The Name Brand Robbery. When a woman approached a bank teller in Bowling Green, Ohio, no one suspected she was anything more than another customer. But suddenly, the stakes went up. Brandishing an electronic handheld device, the woman threatened the teller and the lives of everyone in the bank. Everybody freeze! Lady, give me all the money. This is a remote control to a car bomb. Out here, I will level this place, and I mean it. Don't move! This is a the bank employees control. glanced nervously at one another. It was not a threat to be taken lightly, or so it seemed. I'm not giving her anything. But suddenly, one of the tellers grew surprisingly and defiantly bold. The teller walked out from behind the counter to confront the would-be bank robber. She wrestled the woman to the ground, and the police were called to the scene. What made the teller think that the woman wouldn't detonate the bomb? Maybe it was the brand name printed plainly on the end of the garage door opener, which she can now use to close her cell door. Now, actual footage of the amazing tuna shield. A dumb criminal approached this store with a loaded pistol. Once inside the store, he demanded money from the clerk and aimed his pistol directly at the clerk's chest. When the clerk grabbed this box of tuna enhancer, even though it was just cardboard and uncooked pasta, the tuna enhancer was strong enough to deflect the bullet and save the clerk's life. The dumb criminal was thwarted by a quick and easy meal. Maybe the stuff when it's dry like this, maybe it's just wrong, I don't know. David Jones of Wilton Manors tells us the blockheaded truth in Freeze, We're Not the Police. We made a couple controlled purchases out of a house, and we were drawing up a search warrant. We executed this particular search warrant. We had our usual raid gear on with our vest and our guns and all the attire identifying us as police. During that time, a female comes to the door, knocks on the door, and we answer the door in our police shirts four or five inch letters, police across our chest, asked for the particular person we have already arrested and transported to the jail. We said, he's not here, what do you need? She wants cocaine. So she comes in the house and she starts looking at us and she's looking obviously at what we're wearing, not to mention <laughs> the vest and the guns laying out on the couch and the counter. And you guys aren't police, are you? She said, no, we're not police, we're just taking over for what's his face. <laughs> and uh, she says, well, all right, give me a half gram. Well, let me see some money. So she hands over the money. We say we lied. We are the police. And <laughs> <laughs> she went to jail, too. In Florida, it used to be against the law for children to be stubborn. But you could make them nauseous at will. Next, a moonstruck moron lets the big one get away in Gone Fishing. In a small town in East Tennessee, the infamous Greenback Bank sat on the main road, which was the only road in or out of town, which made it very easy to catch bank so robbers. Hold up. Still bad. Nobody move. Hurry. Nobody move. One day, a hurry, local hurry. fishing guide decided to rob the bank on foot, and he made a clean getaway. Hurry. Sorry. Okay. Help what you looking at? No problem. What you... no, no problem. Knowing the area well, the fisherman hid the money in an old tree by the creek, then settled in his cabin to wait through the winter until spring when he could finally spend the money without raising suspicions. 
Come spring, the thawing ice and snow had made the river flood and carry most of the stolen money out of the hollow tree. How's it going? Did y'all catch any? I got four 20s. I got a 50. Oh, that ain't nothing. I got two C notes up in that cove. Mm. <laughs> the heck with a lemon. <laughs> The fishermen were pulling in the really big ones before the police put two and two together and arrested the fishing guy. Two dumb criminals go from fast food to jail food. Take your buns and run. One cool summer night, two dumb criminals who were hungry and broke decided on a quick way to remedy both problems with their shotgun. Unbeknownst to the burger burglars, a passing canine unit noticed that the two men waiting in line were holding large guns. In their haste, the two dumb criminals dropped the money, but took the burgers, the scent of which led the canine unit straight to the men. In Virginia, it used to be against the law for a horse to appear in public without a halter. It was just considered rude to eat lobster without a lobster bin. Next up, Randy Stull recalls someone who gets what he deserves, cash, and burn. We were having problems with a young boy that uh, turned uh, arson as a trademark. Uh, he tried uh, to do a bank job one night, and things didn't exactly turn out the way he had planned. And you could tell that he had given it some thought. He had stolen a car, and he cased out a bank that had a glass, uh, glass front and even a glass rear. He took the vehicle, and he crashed it through one of the big plate glass windows. Evidently, there was no alarm activated. As he ran in the bank, this had to be a quick job just in case there were motion sensors. So he scurried around to the bank and he found several bank bags. He grabbed them. Well, he ran back up with his loot got in the car and he went several blocks north on the same street when he got further up in the residential section he had opened up the bank bags and then discovered that the back of the bank was no longer a bank section but it belonged to a real estate company and the bags that he had basically had worthless documents and receipts in it <laughs> time again. Our continued thanks to the policemen and women for their stories. I'm Daniel Butler saying don't be dumb, don't break the law, or we'll see you next time on America's Dumbest Criminals.